you then. Thank you for joining CivilNet this week in our News Digest. Announcements, counter-announcements, open letters and replies that followed the German recognition of the Armenian genocide. The case of the former nagorno karabakh Defense Army commander and the parliamentarian who was abducted and beaten. And a base jumping festival, the extreme sport takes roots in Armenia. The week started with a series of announcements coming out of Turkey following last Friday's Bundestag vote, where 631 lawmakers voted for, one against and one abstained from voting, as a result of which the resolution, remembrance and commemoration of the genocide of Armenians and other Christian minorities in 1915 and 1916 was adopted. The Turkish president announced that the 11 German parliamentarians with Turkish ancestry who backed the resolution on genocides in Ottoman Empire supported the terrorist tactics of the banned Kurdish Workers' Party, PKK. President Erdogan demanded blood tests to see what kind of Turks they are. Chancellor Angela Merkel's office has hit back at the Turkish president's comments. Chancellor's spokesperson said on Monday that while Berlin also considers PKK a terrorist group, to associate individual members of the parliament with terrorism is utterly incomprehensible. The Bundestag reached a sovereign decision. This must be respected. Chancellor Angela Merkel has since faced criticism for her weak response to the issue. The Bundestag speaker, however, had a harsher response. I would not have thought it possible in the 21st century that a democratically elected head of state would criticize members of the German Bundestag by voicing doubts about their Turkish heritage, by labeling their blood as impure, Norbert Lament told the German parliament on Thursday. Also, I reject in all its forms the insinuation that members of the parliament are terrorist mouthpieces, Lambert added, that parliamentarians will face up to any criticism, will even tolerate personal attacks, but anybody who tries to exert pressure on a parliamentarian using threats must know that they are attacking the entire parliament. Lambert's statement was met with applause. The Bundestag had initially scheduled a special debate at the request of the Left Party to address the issue of official Ankara's inadequate announcements. The Left subsequently withdrew this request, considering Lammert's statement satisfactory. German Greens Party co-leader Jem Ozdemir, one of the instigators of the resolution passed on June 2nd, has been singled out by Erdogan and the Turkish-German community in general. Jem Ozdemir, as well as several other German parliamentarians, have been placed under tight police protection after receiving anonymous death threats via social media and on their personal mail. The German press reports that all the death threats and the insults sent to Mr. Ozdemir are being forwarded to the federal police. The three-page document adopted by the German parliament was the first adopted Armenian genocide resolution where a country acknowledges its own role alongside the Ottoman forces. Ambassador of the Federal Republic of Germany to Armenia, Matthias Kiesler, spoke to CivilNet in more detail about the provisions in the adopted document. There are two aspects maybe um, that have not been that much discussed also here. One aspect is uh, that Germany recognized some responsibility. Germany, the German Empire, was an ally with Turkey and the parliamentarians in the resolution uh, recognized that it is also part of the German history. We have to deal with it. What was the role of, of the officials? What was the role of the diplomats? And to also to draw conclusions from this. And the second one, it is even more operative, is uh, what can we do, uh, what, uh, what can we do to to revive somehow the, the normalization between Turkey and Armenia? For example, through projects bringing together population from Armenia and from Turkey, civil society between the two countries. And in the resolution, uh, the German government is called upon to, um, to increase the efforts to, to bring the, 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 uh, the, the population together and uh, to have more understanding on both sides. So it's directed to Armenia at the same time to, to Turkey. Osman Kavala, chairman of the Turkish Anadolu Kultur NGO, says the German resolution was unique in a number of aspects. One being that it was not the result of any lobbying by the Armenian community and the Armenian government, and that the process was purely German. German uh, decision is more relevant for Turkey because uh, they are doing that in order to 
open the dark pages of their own history. So compared to some other uh, adaptation of genocide resolution, uh, this is something more genuine. And in that sense, it has got the potential to be a stronger example for Turkey. Uh, you know, we don't expect the Turkish government uh, to uh, accept that uh, what happened in 1915 was a genocide uh, in the near future, or even the majority of the Turkish public uh, may not uh, agree with that, but it is important to have a very objective uh, information and discussion about what had happened. Uh, the situation has changed. We have now more publications, uh, more material uh, to enable the young people to learn more about it. But of course it is important that uh, the government must have a, a positive and critical attitude. When uh, Mr. Davutoglu was in Yerevan a few years ago, uh, he said that the deportation was inhumane. And we were expecting that he would follow this line uh, and uh, acknowledge the responsibility of the Ottoman government at that time for what had happened. But unfortunately, that line was interrupted and the attitude was not to take any response, not to, uh, not to uh, attribute any responsibility to the Ottoman government for what had happened, as if it was an unintended consequence uh, of the security uh, decision. Uh, this is not a healthy approach and this, this in a way cuts the uh, rational deliberation in the Turkish society. The Armenian Patriarchate in Istanbul published an open letter addressed to the President of Turkey saying the decision that the Bundestag made about the events during the tragic times of World War I caused regret in our nation. The letter goes on to accuse the German parliament of expressing an opinion when it has no right to do so, and more so it's done on behalf of the entire German nation. Curiously, Archbishop Adam Ateşan, who signed the letter, claimed to be speaking on behalf of the Armenian community in Turkey. The editors of Istanbul's Agostelli replied to Archbishop Ateşan's letter, disagreeing with the content and the style of it. The editorial answer also reminds the Archbishop that what he is praying for, that is the common future of Armenian and Turkish people, would be possible only when an honorable reconciliation is achieved, because then there wouldn't be the kind of oppression that would cause the likes of the Archbishop to deny even their own history. The letter concludes saying, on this occasion, barring your style in your letter, we once again express our sorrow uprising and anger and pray to God for you. May God bestow sense, intelligence and comprehension onto you. We also pray to God for giving you a dignified attitude which you obviously lack. In Stepanagert, Haik Hanumyan, an opposition member of the Nagorno-Karabakh parliament, was abducted in broad daylight by men in military uniforms and beaten. Hanumyan has been hospitalized with severe injuries. An investigation has been launched regarding the incident, which has been criticized by the Nagorno-Karabakh authorities. Two men have been arrested so far. The incident with Haik Hanumyan has been largely linked to the return of former Nagorno-Karabakh Defense Army Commander Samvel Babayan from Russia. Babayan insists his return does not pursue a political agenda. However, on several occasions, he has criticized authorities in Yerevan and their defense tactics. In an interview with Civilnet, Babayan emphasized that the four-day conflict escalation in Karabakh was a result of weakened Armenian frontline defense patrol and that the authorities should have invested in anti-aircraft defense mechanisms to counter adversary attacks as a strong air defense defense is the main strategy Armenia can adopt to counter Azerbaijani advancement. In Stepanagert, Babayan was welcomed by a large crowd. Haik Kanumian has been an outspoken supporter of Samvel Babayan's return and had initiated a campaign calling for his reinstatement as the commander of the nagorno karabakh Defense Army, something that Babayan insists was done without his consent. As part of the Russian-led Collective Security Treaty Organization, Armenia will be joining the organization's Air Defense Coalition. This decision has been met with a lot of concern in Armenia, as the move would mean Armenia's air defense will be controlled by Russia's Armed Forces North 
Caucasus Command. A new element in the periodic table will be named after Russian Armenian scientist Yuri Oganesian. Oganesan, symbol OG for element 118, will be one of the four new additions to the fourth line of the periodic table. The first space jumping festival kicked off in Armenia on June 5. The Datave ropeway in Datev, the longest in the world, was the perfect base for the jumpers. 60 participants from eight countries came to participate. I leave you with the stunning visuals. No, baby.